second fight of night. We have Pat Sabatini versus TJ Laramie. Pat Sabatini is coming at 16 and 3 on at least a five fight win streak. He's coming at 145. Obviously, the featherweight division, 5'8 with a 70 inch reach. On the other side, we have TJ Laramie coming in at 5'6 with a 66 inch reach. So, height disadvantage and also a reach disadvantage. He's coming at a loss to a Gi team sub due to Derek Minner. Um, very interesting matchup. You know, most of the time we see uh, striker versus wrestler, you know, wrestler versus jiu-jitsu guy, what, whatever it may be. But this is definitely, in my opinion, wrestler v. wrestler here. And, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with the proof is in the pudding. Who's better? And, you know, we've seen a lot more tape on Pat Sabatini. He has a lot more hype behind him and a lot more wrestling credentials, in my opinion. Um you know, he's wrestled the heck out of some guys. And even though he's been on the wrong side of some, I believe a heel hook where he was kind of getting dominated by, um, I forgot what his name is, but he came in and got a heel hook sub after a scramble. So I'm taking uh, old boy Pat Sabatini here. Sabatini. I got to agree with you. The pride of Philadelphia, man. There's a lot of good things to say about TJ Laramie, and I've heard nothing since I started looking into this fight other than, you know, Derek Minner was a fluke. And I, I agree. I think TJ Laramie is a lot better than what he was able to show his last time out. You know, I think he's a, a much more competent striker than he gets credit for, which, you know. I think, I think both of them are more than competent strikers, actually. Even though they're wrestling-based, I think they can both hold their own in striking. Well, it's funny because, you know, Pat Sabatini is usually a pretty small 45er. He's a short, compact guy. And TJ Laramie is actually smaller than he is. So I think it'll be interesting to see what Sabatini can do having a reach advantage for, you know, one of maybe few times in his MMA career. But I think the thing that gets me really excited about him is how aggressive he is looking for submissions, whether he's on the top or the bottom. So, you know, when this fight inevitably gets to the ground, whoever gets it there, you know, Sabatini can be dangerous from either position. He's a black belt under Daniel Gracie. He's also a black belt in something I'd never heard of before. Gage, maybe you've heard of this. Tang Soo Do. It's like a Chinese striking style. It's almost like karate-esque, but it's interesting. Sabatini throws a lot of spinning attacks. <laughs> I guess I would imagine that kind of comes with training with a guy like Paul Felder, but I think <laughs> I you're about to say Valley Tudo. Valley Tudo. <laughs> or the fuck is called. Dude, I, I just think Sabatini's great on the top. He's great on the bottom. And I think overall, he's got that one punch knockout power that few guys at 45 have. So if he can get TJ Laramie trying to protect the takedown and drop his hands, he could pull, you know, Kamara Usman, George Masvidal, too, and leave this man looking real silly. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just go into these fights thinking one thing, okay, it's strength v. strength, you know, both these guys. One of these guys is going to get each other to the ground. However, you, you get in these situations where both guys are like, you know, this guy's a credential wrestler, like it's not worth my time and energy expenditure to go out here and try to get him to the ground when he is inevitably going to the chain wrestle and get back to the top. So a lot of the time, these wrestler v. wrestlers matchups, they end up just pure striking boxing matchups. Um, so I could definitely see that happening here. Um, this, I think that's really what was around the walls for this fight. For whatever reason, that's just what I'm feeling. However, I do think Pat Sabatini has the advantage in the wrestling department and probably could get on top and just eat up brown control time, AKA lamb prey. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if the wrestling approach doesn't work for either guy and who comes out as the better striker in this MMA match. I right, look as much as the wrestling is probably pretty balanced. 
You know, I, th- I imagine Sabatini is a lot better with the jujitsu game. So I think if I think if he can get on top, I think a he'll have the better ability to keep TJ Laramie on his back than Laramie would if he had gotten a takedown. And B, you know, I think Sabatini is just crafty with how he chases submissions. So I would not be surprised to see him pull one off here. And I'm actually really excited to check the odds for y'all on that. My, my question is at 5'6", why isn't TJ Laramie wrestling the, the Cody Stamens of the world at, you know, 135? Look, and I, I feel bad picking against him. He's one of the guys that always interacts with our Instagram posts. Seems like a big calf kick experience kind of guy. But, you know, I think the UFC was trying to bolster this card with a good matchup. And I think, you know, they definitely got their money's worth because these two guys can both brawl. They're definitely both up and comers. And whoever does lose is definitely not out of a career. They definitely might have to go back to the drawing board. But I definitely think there's a lot of promise in both of these guys' careers going forward. All right. Speaking of good matchups, let's get into the odds. This is quite surprising to me, Zach. All right. We have Pat Sabatini coming as the minus 400 favor versus TJ Laramie at plus 375. Um, for this line, dude, I just – they're saying something I don't because I do not see the value – I. Pat's having team minus 400. I mean, shit, that, that is fucking high. Um, well, it's just funny. I, I think Pat Sabatini has looked like just such a total beast the last times that he's been out. But I think TJ Laramie is definitively better than Jamal Emmers. And I think TJ Laramie poses a much different and more challenging stylistic matchup to Sabatini than Tucker Lutz did. I mean, even Jamal Emmers mounted uh, Pat Sabatini multiple times, although he was rocked. I'll give him that. And Pat Sabatini did get the finish. Um, The way that he just gave up full mount like that was definitely concerning and not something you want to see as the minus 400 favorite to also another wrestler. I get that he was rocked, but... um, I guess prop wise, you know, we're rocking with Sabatini, but maybe make some money on uh, this fight goes to decision. You see that anywhere? Here's what I got. Here's what I got for y'all. You know, I'm I'm pretty hesitant to play any parlays this week just because we were so close last week and Piotr Jan broke my heart. I, I'm not saying we're out of the parlay business altogether, but this week I think we're probably going to stay away from it. But on this fight specifically, here's what I'm going to do. You know, say that I would put $100 on Pat Sabatini minus 400. That's not going to win me shit. So what I'm going to do is take three quarters of that and put $75 on Sabatini wins by submission at plus 175 and take that other 25 bucks just in case and put it on Sabatini wins by knockout at plus 900 just on the odds. He can get that overhand right to connect. He's got the power to put lights out just like that. I don't know about Sabatini by decision or uh, by submission. I feel like that's under, that's overrated for whatever. Plus 175 is just not something I like there. Um, I think the best, I think the best is probably going Sabatini plus 140 inside the distance, even though I'm not even. That's a good on that, right dude. I think you know your best bet is the fight goes to decision at minus one fifteen, regardless of a winner. Um, I think that's actually pretty damn good odds. You don't even have to pick a guy, but I just, just don't see either of these guys putting each other away, especially with the wrestling can run could god damn it, credentials. I look, it's hard for me to stray away from that plus nine hundred for a knockout. That, that's nice. I was, that's really nice. But that did such a long shot. Well, that's my thing. And the reason I can't stray away from it was because I was thinking about making that bet before I even checked what the odds were. You know, I didn't come here and see the odds and get lured into making a bad bet like I've done in episodes past. You know, I thought about this one and considered it before we got here. And when I saw the value on it, 
Shit. Well, that's the money. That's the money talk. 